Hey guys, I am tuning in from New Haven, Connecticut. This summer I am an instructor at a snow program at Yale University. The program is called Yale Young Global Scholars. But this is not the point of this video. I just wanted to tell you a few lessons that I learned while writing my thesis. The first one is initially I was very skeptical of just doing a literature review. Just to give you a little bit of background, previously I worked on numerous research projects where you know you had like a specific problem that you wanted to solve and then you apply some methods and you get some results. That was my idea of research. But what I realized this past year is that some topics, like some topics in pure math, require a lot of background and learning and information that you need to absorb before you can actually make contributions to a given field. So it is totally okay to spend a substantial amount of time trying to learn new things, console the information, and write a literature review. And also a lot of researchers and mathematicians aren't good at presenting their results in a clear, concise, and understandable, digestible way. So if you write a literature review, it, it can actually provide useful information to other people and they can learn with you. And that's also a contribution. Understanding something complicated and then like explaining it in a clear way, it is already a lot of work and it is important. So basically before doing this senior thesis, I was also confused about how pure mathematicians do research. Like what do mathematicians do when they're working outside of, you know, classes and teaching. And now I have some idea about how they do it. So what I learned this year is that there are multiple ways, of course, to do mathematical research, but some of the ways that I learned about is, so the first one is you have some observations or like some examples, some like very specific examples, and they follow some mathematical pattern that you notice. And then if you see some pattern, you can create a conjecture. It is a question that you ask, and then you can spend the rest of your time trying to figure it out or let other people figure it out. But one of the important steps in doing research is identifying the problem, because there are so many things that you could work on and some of them are not that important some of them are really important. Building this kind of taste, this ability to differentiate between different problems and your capacity to solve them is really important. But once you've built a conjecture, now you can try to figure it out or you can look online, look at other papers that mention some kind of observations or conjectures that they've noticed. And so you can just read those and find something that interests you, some question, and then try to solve it using the techniques that you know and apply them in a creative way. So in my case, in my thesis, I worked with very concrete examples. My topic was not theory. There you can compute very specific things for each knot in a database, so you have a database of nodes, and you can compute things for them and then see if there are any interesting relations between the things, the invariants actually, that you compute. So I was looking at knot invariants and I established multiple new conjectures about knots and how they are related. Initially, I wasn't even sure if I can contribute anything to this field of pure math, low dimensional topology, as an undergraduate, because I think in general, research, especially mathematical research, can seem very intimidating. You might feel like you don't have enough background or skills or knowledge to contribute but actually you can if you specialize in a given topic and you spend a substantial amount of time learning about the topic and then bringing your skills maybe from a different field that can really make a difference and then you can contribute something new so in my case i felt like a lot of pure mathematicians don't really like to write programs or write some code and i felt like that is something that i could contribute with uh, my own background in computational methods and whatever i was doing before and yeah, it worked out. Another point is that you should really choose your advisor, whether it's a research advisor, senior thesis advisor, any kind of advisor, very carefully. In particular, you should not only think about your research interest fit, but also your personality fit. So, for example, if one professor is extremely kind, and nice, and very chill, and doesn't push their students to work really hard, for some students this might be fine. Like, if you're a really hardworking student and you like to work independently, this kind of professor might be a good mentor. But if you if you are a student who needs continuous supervision and giving deadlines and all of that, then a different kind of professor might be better for you. And it's really important to think about this before choosing your advisor. And that is something that I learned this year <laughs> and I will hopefully apply it in the future. 
Also, just like a comment about the fact that I find it very rewarding to contribute something yourself to a field and I think it is rewarding to take initiative in your work because nobody is ever gonna push you a lot to do something, especially in an undergraduate school or an undergrad because any research project is open-ended and you can set goals as high as you want or as low as you want but at the end of the day, if you want to achieve something meaningful, you should be ambitious, in my opinion I think self-motivation and journal motivation is extremely important in any kind of work you do because that's what sets you apart. If that's something that you are passionate about, then you have to be consistent, you have to put time and just believe in yourself that you can achieve something that can seem very far away right now. Over this past nine months, I spent around 180 hours on this project of my senior thesis. I actually calculated because I was trying to be extremely thoughtful and intentional about my thesis. So I documented every time I had focused work. Also, it's totally okay to ask your advisor if he can publish your work. Because I think for me, for a long time, I just wasn't really sure if whatever I do is good enough to be published especially i was very ambitious like, even when i was in high school or like, a freshman in college i knew i wanted to publish like and share my results but i wasn't really sure or confident in my ability or like whatever i produced i wasn't sure if it's good enough and guess what <laughs> it was good enough basically like this time during my thesis defense i actually was told by my second reader that i should publish my results i just felt so good that you know i was doing something and a professor who is an expert in this field recognized my work so i guess like an advice that i could give myself a few years ago that i should really be more confident in my abilities and whatever projects i'm working on you should always ask for feedback either from your advisor or second reader or other people in your department, peers, anyone. Getting feedback is essential to good writing and good research, in my opinion. So if you have a chance, always ask for feedback. That's all that I wanted to share with you. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll see you very soon. Bye.